Hi there, hope you're well. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be making an edge sanding jig for the sanders that Festool won't support. That's coming up next. And welcome back, I'm Peter Millard, and on this channel, I make 10 minute ish videos about woodwork projects with some handy workshop tips and jigs like the one I'm making today. And if you're new here, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell to turn on notifications. Now, if you haven't heard about this, then Festool announced recently, last week or the week before, an edge sanding solution, they call it, based around their ETS-125 sander. For whatever reason, uh, the older versions of the sander and mines from 2009 don't fit the jig or positioning guide, as they call it. So I thought I'd have a go at making one that does. Now, there's a whole debate as to whether an edge sander is really worthwhile. I have some thoughts on this and I'll probably share them while my Patreon credits run at the end of the video. But let me know in the comments down below if you think this is a pointless gimmick or a worthwhile accessory. Uh, as I say, the official Festival accessory won't fit my sander, which is the ETS-125 EQ, so I'll make one that does. My prototype jig that you may have seen on Instagram is pretty simple. There's a base that the sander attaches to and another that sits on the surface of the workpiece with a handle attached. These are connected with plywood brackets, one L-shaped and one T-shaped, that puts the center of the sanding pad roughly central to the workpiece. And there's a bar that connects the bracket that holds the sander in place. Now, I've made some basic templates available to download for free. There's a link down in the video description. The templates are actual size, so they're easy to cut up and stick down. And let's begin by cutting out all the parts, starting with the base. I'm using 12 mil or half inch birch ply for the base, and I've cut a piece to 210 mil, a little wider than the sander, and quite a bit longer than I need, so that I can clamp it comfortably in these early stages. The 18mm plywood brackets need to be staggered to avoid the dust port and hose, and this means that the base needs a section cut away. On mine it was 140 by 50 mil and I'm also nibbling away the inside corner just for some extra clearance. Back of the bench I have the sander positioned close to the edge of the base so I don't cover up the air intakes, and the next thing I need to do is figure out how to get the sanding pad perpendicular to the base. On my sander, the body needs to be raised by 3mm, conveniently the thickness of a piece of scrap hardboard, and I check this carefully with a digital angle finder. I want to get onto the brackets next, and these can be cut easily from a pair of 200 by 100 mil 18 mil plywood blanks, or you can gang them up to be more economical, just remember that they do need to be the same height. The height of the brackets is determined by the centre of the sander plus the thickness of the workpiece base. I'm using 12mm for that as well. And on mine, this was around 50mm. Again, this is a movable feast depending on the thickness of the edges that you're most likely to be working on. Like many people, I suspect, I'm mostly using between 18 and 25mm thick boards, three quarters of an inch and an inch. And the 125mm sanding pad can accommodate these quite comfortably at those given dimensions. The length of the brackets depends on the size of your workpiece base. 200mm for the brackets in my case, and 210 by 150 mil for my base. And I'm cutting off the corners of the brackets and the base to make it look streamlined and space age, well, something like that anyway. And I've also drilled a hole for the workpiece knob at a convenient place. When fitted, the right-hand side T-bracket needs to be long enough to reach the back of the left-hand L-bracket, as this is where I'll position the bar that clamps the sander down. I'm using 12mm plywood for the bar, and the right-hand side of the T needs to be 75mm off the base for this to be a good fit. The upright of the T also needs to be scooped out to accommodate the extractor hose. The clamping bar is 192 by 45 mil and I've cut away a small section so that it fits the curve of the sander body. You may also need to do a bit of work with the rasp. And I've added a little plywood uprights at either end, one to fit under the T-bar and the other to screw onto the L-bracket to hold the sander down. And talking to sanders, I'm spending a few minutes knocking off the bandsaw rash from the edges paying particular attention to the sander clamp. With all our components cut and sanded, I can start the assembly. The L and T brackets sit on the sander base with a dab of glue and are screwed through from underneath. Thank you. 
and the workpiece space is simply glued onto the brackets and clamped. I don't want any other fixings on there if I can avoid them. And note that I've put a 12mm spacer in between the workpiece base and the bracket uprights. To fit the sander at the correct angle I've mixed up some 2-pack resin filler and put dollops of it onto the base where the sander sits. Then I can cover it in cling film and add in the sander, making sure that it's in the right position by using a scrap of 12mm against the edge of the workpiece base because once the filler sets it's fixed. And then squishing the filler around the sander body like Play-Doh to make sure I get a good mould. As the filler starts to cure, I'm removing the sander and cling film as the process generates a lot of heat and can cause damage. Once cured, I can flip the jig over and use a track saw to cut off the excess of the base. Then add in the sander, fit the clamping bar and screw it down. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I had all kinds of elaborate schemes for clamping the sander down, but a simple plywood bar and a screw works just fine. It takes two seconds to fit or remove. And here in the workshop, there's always a screwdriver within reach. So what's it like in use? Actually, pretty great. The sander sits at a very comfortable height and the workpiece base provides enough support without being so big that it gets in the way. If you're using this on a partially painted surface, denibbing for example, or on a polished workpiece, then I'd probably cover the workpiece base in a soft cloth or maybe some felt pads, but otherwise the plywood seems to slide very smoothly. Now I know some folks are going to be looking at this and saying, what's the point? No professional would need anything like that, I've done lots of sanding without one. Any professional worth their salt should be able to sand edges without thinking, and that's exactly the issue really. As fitted furniture makers, we sand literally miles of edges. I think I worked out on that last build of mine, there were over a hundred linear meters of edges to be sanded from raw and then prep, denib during painting. And yes, when you're doing that kind of quantity, that sort of volume, mistakes can happen and it's really easy to round over an edge or just go in a bit too deep on one side and take the primer off. And a simple jig like this will make that almost impossible to do. And no, that is not a challenge. So is the edge sanding kit worth it? Well, I can't possibly say if it's worth it for you. The full Festool kit, obviously much more sophisticated than what I've thrown together here, is around 550 pounds for the cordless version, 380 for the corded. That's certainly not for me, but even though I'm not really in the fitted furniture business anymore, I still had the £140 or thereabouts Festool jig in my shopping basket until I realised that my sander wouldn't fit. I just want to say a quick thank you to John at Enfield Refurbishments on Instagram for letting me know about that. And that's the only reason that I made this jig. Festool don't support the sander that I have. Well, there is one other reason, actually. You see... I don't use my ETS-125 for edges. Don't get me wrong, it's a great little sander, but the truth is I prefer my orbital sander, the RTS-400 for edges. It's just as small and light as the 125, but I think the dust collection is better on an orbital than a random orbital when you're working on relatively thin edges like this, and I'll definitely be making myself a version of this edge jig for this sander. In fact, we already have the body design on the ETS-125 and the RTS-400 is near identical and this jig made for the 125 fits the RTS-400 perfectly and I'm pretty sure that that's what I'll be using in the future. And talking of the future, the best way not to miss my future videos is to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell to turn on notifications. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, thanks so much to my Patreon pals for their awesome support. Come and join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop for additional exclusive content or behind the scenes videos like me mangling my initial prototype here. Uh, that's it for this week though. Thanks again for watching. Uh, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.